this place. May your glory saturate this place. May revelation touch your people. May importation take place. May those with hungry hearts, I bind every spirit. I bind every monitoring spirit in this place. I bind every satanic and witchcraft spirit that tries to come and spy. I bind and close every portal of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the blood of Jesus. Those who are sent, may you feel the torment even as you go home. You come in and to spy and to give reports. May you feel the torment because you couldn't stay longer than 10 minutes. May the fire of the Holy Ghost take a hold of you until you repent. The leader with whom I saw the spirit of death lurking behind you with suicide. I pray for your soul and I shall see you soon. Father, may your presence saturate this place. May angels Capture this atmosphere right now. May angels saturate this atmosphere in Jesus' mighty name. May every person encounter you tonight. May every person receive importation of the mantle. Those whose hearts are connected and those who are hungry. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Come on, let's give him a praise offering, church. Amen. Have your seats. Have your seats. Have your seats. Mm. Mm. <laughs> okay. We want to welcome those online. Uh, we have people from Philadelphia, New York, Cyprus, UK, Lister to Minnesota, West Virginia, Pakistan, Botswana, Zimbabwe, uh, USA, uh, Canada, Zambia, America. I hope people know that America and USA is the same. Bronx, New York, California. Please, we need some uh, literate people eh, to write these things. New Zealand, Dubai, Beijing, Mauritius. Local, uh, we have from Midrand, Cape Town, KZN, Somerset West, Worcester, Limpopo, Mpumalanga, Pretoria, Danefin, Athlone, Fentersdorp, Kloof, Durban, Johannesburg, Boxburg, Randfontein, Santon, and Springs. So we want to welcome all of you online and hope that you have a great service. I want to ask you at this moment to quickly uh, just share the broadcast, tag somebody, but also if you're watching us on YouTube, do me a favor and click the uh, thumbs up button, click the like button, the thumbs up button, and um, uh, 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 that will help with the algorithm. The moment you do it, if you're not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe and click the notification bell. And guys, we are doing this because YouTube is the new TV. 
TV will be gone in a few, in maybe two years or so, and YouTube will be the new TV, as you know it, so um, as we know it right now. So um, that is why we are building up, and I think we've just reached 20,000 subscribers. So um, uh, just click the th thumbs up button and click this and subscribe to the channel. If you watch this afterwards, 70% of you are not subscribed. So sub subscribe to us and click the notification bell. That will really help us. Amen. How many of you are excited to be here tonight? And uh, 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 uh. you see, you need to, you need to understand that, that sometimes uh, they can come in some individuals and do some little things, some uh, incantations and etc. Listen, apparently YouTube is better quality than Facebook, so you can move over to YouTube. Uh, did Facebook freeze or is it just better quality? Just let me know because on my side it's frozen. Um, uh, uh, no, just better. Okay, so YouTube is better quality. So you can move over to, to, to YouTube if you want to have better quality. But um, you have to be very sensitive. Um, you know, uh, we had to deal with individuals that was here just right now that came from the occult. And they try to come and challenge and blah, 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 blah. But they can't stand 10 minutes in the service. And, um, and uh, all they could say is they, th they think I'm smart with my long hair. Yet they had long hair. The devil makes you so confused. I don't know how I think I'm smart with my long hair. But let me tell you something. If you're a church on fire and they come in not wanting deliverance, uh, they will run. If they come in wanting deliverance, they will get deliverance. Are you guys with me? Many times they can sit and they can do their little incantations and this and that and this and that. And sometimes if a church is weak, they don't get breakthrough in, for, in, in, in worship. Just by that. And, um, and we don't take lightly that there's many, many, many of those in the occult in, in uh, Krugersdorp. Many have committed murder. Many who have, uh, who has, um, who has uh, done, done very wicked things. But that doesn't mean we don't love them. Uh, they might hate and scream and this and that, but that doesn't mean we don't love them. We love them. They are just possessed. And uh, they are the individuals that we want to set free. Okay, it is just sad that they can't sit through a service. So if you're watching online, you the ringleader, if you're watching... Why don't you come and greet me next time instead of sitting and squabbling and gossiping and, and uh, writing your little notes or recording like they usually do. Why don't you come and say hello? You can write notes in my office. And um, uh, uh, let's see. So, so with the mantles. Let's see where we were. I want to... Um, I want to, uh, we want to minister plus we want to teach and I need to carry on from where we were this morning. How many of you were here this morning? Let me just see your hands. Okay. And um, please understand when once we touch and we get to they shall expel conference, you're going to see very, 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 very funny individuals turning up. Are you guys with me? Uh, I was in one church meeting. <laughs> They're actually around the corner here. Um, but it was another branch of theirs. And, uh, and there was many Satanists there with knives to kill me. The one was sitting next to my wife with a knife like this. And, um, and uh, the power went, while I was preaching, the power went off. It's a black church like this, but it was pitch dark. You couldn't see anything. And so I turned around, so I told the worship leaders, I said, come sing a song. They said, we can't, our voices are stuck, we can't. I said, oh dear Lord, I, said, and I began to sing, um, I exalt thee, with no microphone, a cappella, just began to sing, that the presence of God can come in. And then I said, I said, every Satan is here that's trying to kill me, I get up and come to the front, come now. I said, come now. Those five jumped up and pushed the Christians out of the way. The Christians got so scared, they ran out of the meeting. There was a pastor there who ran with his wife, going into panic attack, <laughs> like panic attack, full blown, and began to run out of the meeting. I'm like, you are a pastor. And as they ran with their knives forward, the one next to my wife stood up with a knife like this and said, I have to kill Leon. 
My wife said to grab and said, "You sit down." She said, "I will kill him." That's my assignment. Anyway, five came forward, and there you have not you have a split second to decide what to do. And uh, so I jumped down from the altar and began to lay hands on them. Uh, I think one or two one or two got saved. The others ran into the highway, jumped in front of cars. I mean, we had to pull, drag them, drag them back into it. We have it all on film into the meetings uh, because their assignment failed. But the Christians were so scared because they had no power. They had no power. When I say scared, before that they were singing, um, we're going to take the kingdom of the kingdom of God, the, the, what the violent, what uh, the kingdom of God uh, suffered violence, but the violent take it by force. And we were seeing that. And, and until that happened, they couldn't do nothing violent. So, so don't be a sissified Christian. The authority and the power in you is far greater than those who are of the devil or those who think they are of the devil or those who, it's far greater. And they know it. And if you know your identity, trust me, they know it very well. Why they come in quick in and out is so that we don't pull them out. They just come and get a report and leave. For the coven for Halloween that's coming up. For the churches they have to pray against and do sacrifices against. Anyway. So watch your cars, watch your houses. What I mean by watch your cars, I'm not speaking of natural things. Say with me, life is spiritual. Mm -hmm. Okay, there is a battle out there, whether you like it or not. There is a spiritual battle out there. If you think there is not, uh, let us take, take you some places. Let us take you to some people. You will quickly find out that there are people, life is spiritual that they live in the night or they live underwater. <laughs> okay. So, and they'll have more power than 99% of Christians because they are so dedicated and committed to their cause. And Christians can't even wake up and pray. And we wonder why there's not revival. Are you guys with me? We are in the highest satanic activity city in South Africa. Krugersdorp. That is why we have to build a headquarters here we have to for the sake of the city and it has to train people with power do you know what the occult does they cast thoughts and seeds of offense into your heart to see who is weak they study people and say that one is weak with lust that one is weak with this and they cast spells on you think this is lying I've had five sex slaves sent to me. Five. One took off all their clothes. They are used as sex slaves in the kingdom of darkness. And this is just my ginger tea, which helps my voice. So don't just be a Christian that is la di da di da we're just coming to church. There is a battle that is going on. And your protection lies in the submission of a local church. It's a, it lies in the submission of the local church. It's a, it lies in the submission of the local church. It's, it's um, you better make sure you're under somebody who carries a mantle. 
There are many pastors who don't carry a mantle. They don't have nothing to give spiritually. Substance. I'm just talking now. Is that okay? They have nothing to give substance-wise. They can't cast a fly out of a room. They can't heal a headache. They can quote a few scriptures and that is it. And they rather ignore the devil and let the devil not be there. Like an ostrich head which is in the sand. Or a monkey, a monkey who closes his eyes and nothing is there. That is what they do in the spirit. Um, do you know how many pastors I've met who says, oh, don't, don't concentrate on this stuff. You know that uh, if you just ignore it, it'll go away. What? What war? Paul says we have been, we have been, Paul says we have been enlisted into a warfare. We have been enlisted into a warfare. Are you guys with me? Unfortunately, these ones that have been sent are just small ones and they are being used. I pray for their souls. That's what I'm saying. If you hear this live stream, please come and see me. Because you're being used. They're going to spit you out and kill you. So the church is there to love you and to worship uh, and, to, and to let you worship God and, uh, and to break the power of fear that you are in denial of that is there. Uh, the power of manipulation, intimidation, control, and obligation. The four legs of spiritual witchcraft, of the occult. And, uh, uh, and they come. We have the chapter head of of the satanic church on the other side also one of our other branches that's also there and um and uh, uh, uh you know the poor the poor the problem is that once you get into a power clash into a church like this and you leave bad things happen i've seen them being hit by other cars I've seen them, a lot of things happen. And these are things that Christians don't, don't know. So, and I'm not one bit afraid of, of, of man. That's why I say, come and see me. Let's get, into, let's get into the message. Let's get into the message so that we can do what uh, God wants to do. Go with, me to, go with me to 1 Kings chapter number 19, verse 19. 1 Kings 19, verse 19. This city is not going to be easy to deal with because you have to, you have to, you have to um, depossess the enemy. You have to displace the enemy. Before, you have to displace the kingdom of darkness before you can put in the kingdom of light. The kingdom of God. That's how it works. Jesus had to it came casting out devils and then the kingdom came. That's how it works. So before somebody can receive the kingdom of God, they have to go through deliverance and the kingdom of darkness has to be cast out of them before the kingdom of light can be put into them. Are you guys with me? So, 1 Kings 19 verse 19. So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he was with the 12. So with me, he found Elisha. And Elisha had 12 yoke of oxen, which means that Elisha had a business. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Please let me kiss my father and my mother, then I will follow you. And Elijah said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? I want you to see the harshness of the call of God. God isn't waiting. 
God is not waiting for, for uh, God is not waiting for excuses. But I, you know, so many people have excuses. But I first want to do this. But I first want to do that. You know, I first want to uh, run my business. I first want to uh, go study. You know, I first want, I'm not saying you mustn't study, but when the call of God comes, you ought to immediately respond. That is why so few are operating in the call of God. Because there hasn't been an immediate response. Jesus is requiring nothing less than leaving everything behind and following Him. It happened with Elisha and it happened with Jesus. He just, the man just wanted, Elisha just wanted to go say goodbye to his parents. I mean, think of it. He just wanted to say bye-bye, kiss them farewell. And Elijah says, what have I to do with you? Have I, am I the one who called you? Go do your, whatever you want. I'm leaving. Because I didn't call you. God said, I must, I must anoint you. You do whatever you want. If you don't want to take this thing serious, that a mantle has fall upon you, to be the next prophet, master prophet, in my place. Hmm. Are you guys with me? I'm getting into the technicalities of the mantle. So, so listen to this. So it says, what have I to do with you? What have I done to you? So Elisha turned back from him and took, and he said, no, 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 no. I've, set, I've upset this man now. I need, to make, I need to make right what I've done. He said, so Elisha turned back from him. And took a yoke of oxen and slaughtered them and boiled their flesh. So he took his business. He took the thing that brought him in sustenance, that brought money to him, that kept him alive. And he said to show that I'm serious about the call of God. Please, I'm not saying everybody must do this. I want you to look at the point that I'm making of the seriousness of answering the call. Elisha made sure there's no option B. In my life, it has been like that. Up until now, I've never had an option B. I could have maybe gone and study and so on, but I would have started from the bottom. There wasn't another thing that I could have done. There wasn't a business I could just go and step into and just leave this thing. There was no option B. I had to say yes to the call of God. I had to follow the call of God. Too many people today have too many options. Are you guys with me? Took a yoke of oxen, slaughtered them and boiled their flesh using the oxen's equipment and gave it to the people and they ate. Then he arose, listen to this, and followed Elijah and became his friend. Huh? And became his staff member. Became his employee. He became his servant. The first key to the mantle is servanthood. Some young guy, for eight years, we've walked a road with him. Eight years. And uh, he was in the back there with someone. And he said to the wrong person, I'm so tired of serving this guy, this Leon guy. Leon guy? And I've been walking eight years with you? I didn't hear it, but the Lord heard it. Three months later, the Lord made sure he was gone. He never served me. I can't remember him ever bringing me a tea. I can't remember him ever opening up my door. 
I can't remember him bring, doing anything in terms of serving. Those who serve become great. I don't think I never served. Are you guys with me? Those, if you want to be great, Jesus said, serve. Become someone's servant. Serve people. If you want to become great, if you want to be first, be lost. If you want to be great, become a servant. Let's find somebody, find a church, find somewhere where you can be the lowest and you can do the lowest job and you can serve. And the towel of the anointing will come upon you. When you have the towel of servanthood on you, the anointing will rest on your life. The anointing doesn't come because of money. It comes because of serving. I'm going to say it again. The anointing doesn't come because of your tithe. The tithe belongs to God. The anointing comes because of serving. If you think you can buy this thing, you're like Simon the sorcerer who wanted to buy the gift of the Holy Ghost. When he saw Peter and them baptizing people in the, in the Holy Spirit and they started praying in other tongues, he wanted to buy the gift. The anointing cannot be purchased except by paying a price of servanthood. Are you guys with me? Uh, this translation says, Then he arose and followed Elijah. Put in the King James Version for me. I want to read something. Come on, guys, move one back. I don't want three words on the screen. Uh, put on the NIV for me. I'm looking for something. Put on the Amplified for me. Put into the NLT for me. Maybe I'm not going to find it tonight, but it is somewhere. You became his assistant. No. Put into the, what other translations is it? Go through some more translations there that I haven't mentioned. Uh -uh, another one. I think it might be in one that we don't have, which is either your Tyndale or your, uh, um, uh, look at me, if we look for passion, no, passion is, 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 is young little, no, 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 I'm like, I think it's in the Tyndale, that he says, the one translation says this, that he ran after Elijah. Are you guys with me? Say with me, speed. speed. Many will say, but why are the people running after us here? Because they understand the principle of the anointing. They understand the principle of the anointing. When you're around somebody that is anointing, anointed, you would feel speed. You would want to do things with speed. Because that's how the anointing works. Are you guys with me? Let's go to, let's go to um, 2 Kings chapter number 2. 2 Kings chapter number 2. I'm not speaking about the technicalities. For those online, I'm speaking about the technicalities of the mantle on how to receive the mantle. A mantle, there are specific keys to receive a mantle. And after, the, after I'm going through the scriptures, I'm going to give you the keys on how to recognize, how to honor, how to receive a mantle, which is very important. Mantles are falling still today. Generals are passing on. I said to you, there's a season where generals will be passing on to heaven. And as they are passing on, mantles are being released. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord say to me that the spirit and power of... The spirit and power of Benson Idahoza is coming into the nation of South Africa. The mantle of Benson Idahoza is coming into the nation of South Africa. 
Who is Benson Ida Hosa? It's a man who had such authority that he raised people from the dead like it was drinking Coke Coke. He had authority that presidents and kings and queens would fear him when he would walk into their office because he was the one who removed them out of their office or placed new ones in their office. And the Lord said to me, the spirit and power of Benson Idahoza, that mantle I am dispersing and I'm putting it upon this nation again. And you'll see that I'll raise up young people and I'll raise up those who we might not expect it to happen, that it will come upon them and they shall rise up and they shall change a nation. You don't need a godly government. You need a government that is influenced by godly people who will listen when prophets speak. Have you seen? Somebody was upset because I said, they asked me a question. They said, and yeah, you can go and cut this thing and send them to them again. It's, a, it's fine. Okay. I said, what if ACDP is in, 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 in oh, no, 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 they, they didn't say that. They asked, what if a Christian, what if we have a Christian government? I said, it's not going to change anything. I said, in fact, it's going to make it worse. And they said to me, why and, and so on. I said, first of all, you have the human element that's still there. Second of all, you have a democracy. God works in a theocracy, not a democracy. So where there's a democracy, there is evil. Third of all, now you have a Christian government. When Constantine took over from Nero, Nero was persecuting the Christians. And the church was exploding. When Constantine took over in the New Testament church, and made Christianity famous and popular, build them big buildings, Christianity died. Because they had no need to pray, they had no need to fast, they had no need to fear, uh, uh, to do things, to fear God and to be in a place of reverence and to be in a place of seeking God's face. Everything was just nice. And the power of God left the church and the church went into the dark ages. Because of Constantine. Are you guys with me? So, in actual fact, a non-Christian government might be better than a Christian government. And that is why I'm hated. See, even you, you hate me now. Because I speak the truth. I promise you. We don't need a Christian government. We need a move of God. We need revival. Revival comes when there's persecution. A move of God comes when there's persecution. People get on fire when there's persecution. People get on fire when things are difficult, when there's a recession. People get on fire when there's no food or there's hunger or there's a famine. People get on fire when the economy is bad. People don't get on fire when everything is fine. That is why the American church is so dead. And they only woke up now with Biden. Are you guys with me? They only, the church only woke up now with, because of Biden. And they realize now we're in trouble. The man is being fetched from the basement to do a few words and he messes that up. Shakes hands of Casper. The ghost is not there. And they suddenly miss Trump. All of a sudden miss Trump. <laughs> Fly to Taiwan to go and cause a war. I mean, seriously. So, uh, 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 America is in for a bad, bad thing. But the church got on fire. The people went out on the streets and began to preach the gospel like never before. So, it was comfortable in America. And if you preached in America before this whole thing of Trump and Biden, when everything was seemingly okay, when you preach there, I'm telling you, to knock someone over in the spirit took so much. They were so familiar. 
They had no hunger for God. No hunger for God. You would make calls, they'll just sit there looking at you. After all they would say after is, brother, it was a good service. And you preached your heart out. I mean, you did everything you can. The anointing was there. The power of God was there. But it changed and it flipped now. Because it's time for revival in the United States. And then I trust that it will come here. That it will start in the city of Cape Town. Are you guys with me? So that it is, it takes persecution. It takes suffering for a church to get on fire. It takes persecution and it takes suffering for a church to get on fire and hungry for God. So never waste your pain. Are you guys with me? Never waste your pain. I'm going to say it again. Never waste your pain. In your time of pain and suffering, seek God like never before. Seek Him like never before. But things are going to shift in this city. That is why I'm saying we need a headquarters here. Things will shift. Economically, multiplication, fruitfulness, job-wise, everything, your finances, all of a sudden you're going to be dressing and people will be like, where are you getting those clothes from? And you won't even know because something has automatically changed about you. It is time that you don't dress like your old self anymore, but you dress the way you want to be addressed and you dress the way that you see yourself in the future. Listen to me. The devil is spiritual. The devil is spiritual, but he is not spiritual. He's a spiritual being, but he's not spiritual. So he looks at behavior. He looks at dress code. He looks at actions to determine where a person is. Anyway, have your seats, have your seats. Are you guys with me? We're speaking about mantles. There's mantles, there's mantles, there's mantles that's going to fall. You won't ever be able to do anything for God without a mantle. A mantle is required to do something for the kingdom. Now we see when Elijah is about to go up to heaven. Elisha has been following Elijah for about 8 to 12 years here. Serving him. Being his servant. In one place the Bible says that a king was looking for a word. I'll get there a bit later. And as one of the servants of the king said these words. says, there's a man by the name of Elisha. Who poured water on the hands of Elijah. The word of the Lord is with him. Now to pour water on the hands of somebody was the lowest job of a slave. It was something that was shameful. It was something that was, that was, uh, that was embarrassing. One of the tests, the second test for a mantle is that you must be embarrassed to test if your flesh is dead. I know you don't like it. I know you don't like me or this message because we want quick Christianity. Quick Christianity. Without paying a price, there is a big price to pay for this thing. Yes, Jesus paid the price, but not for the anointing. He paid the price for your salvation, not the anointing. For the anointing to cast out devils, heal the sick, raise the dead, all those things, you have to pay the price for that. Are you guys with me? Now listen to this. And it came to pass when the Lord was about to take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Say with me, Gilgal. Gilgal. He went with Elisha from Gilgal. Then Elijah said to Elisha, stay here by Gilgal, please. For the Lord has sent me on to Bethel. Now say with me, Gilgal. The first place they went past 
was called Gilgal. It was a test for Elisha. Because Elijah said to Elisha, I want you to stay by Gilgal. Stay here. For the Lord has called me to go on. And Elisha said, as long as, my, as long as the Lord lives and your soul lives, I will not leave you. And you have people that leave the church just because this, the, somebody else is sitting on their seats. But I'm going to be used by the kingdom of, kingdom of God. I'm a mighty warrior. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just go slap yourself a few times and get committed. Are, are you guys with me? Gilgal. Say with you, Gilgal. So Gilgal was the place where God instructed Joshua to circumcise the Israelites who were born in the desert. Meaning on a practical level, circumcision has to do with the cutting of our own flesh. Gilgal is the place where you cut your flesh. It's the place where you kill your flesh. It's symbolically a circumcision of death to self and to the desires of the flesh. So the first test was servitude. Say with me, servitude. Number two, say with me, embarrassment. Then there's four places they went by. Let's go number three. Let's call it number three. The third test is Gilgal. Say with me, Gilgal. It's so how to get a mantle. It is to, uh, Gilgal is the place where your flesh dies. It is a place where there's a cutting of flesh. Uh, your wife says this, or your husband says this, or your pastor or your prophet says this, or your leader says this, or somebody drives in front of you on the road and you want to th use a finger or two, and you have to cut the flesh. People persecute you. What must you do? You must bless them. <laughs> Are you guys with me? People persecute you so bad. What must you do? You must bless them that persecute you. It's cutting off the flesh. Picking up your cross. The anointing and the mantle will never come without that. Are you guys with me? Another important thing that happened there by Gilgal was that it was at Gilgal where the manna stopped for the Israelites. Which means that that supernatural provision from God stopped there. And they had to begin to believe in God for themselves to get food. So everything was easy up until that time. When you get to Gilgal, it will feel like the supernatural provision of God has stopped. And now you have to work or you have to do something hard or you have to trust God genuinely for finances or for an income. It's a test for a mantle. Are you guys with me? So at Gilgal, not only do we kill the flesh, we abandon its ways, but also there's a new way that is birthed. It is the way of the spirit and faith, meaning we have to trust God in the spirit and faith for our provision it is Gilgal every Christian will go through Gilgal, Bethel, Jericho, Jordan all the time because it's a process as you're getting promoted so then he said to him, he said then let us, uh, let me carry on reading he says now this, uh, uh, but Elisha said the Lord lives long as your soul lives I will not leave you so they went down to Bethel, say with me Bethel now the sons of the prophets, listen to this. The sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, they were prophesying to him saying, do you not know that the Lord will take away your master from you today? Do you not know that today your master is going to be taken away? They were accurately prophesying. They were sons of the prophets. Take away from you today. And he said, yes, I know. Shut up. Then Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here at Bethel, please, for the Lord has sent me unto Jericho. So he says, listen, I am at Bethel. I want you to stay here. The sons of the prophets say you must stay here. Everybody is coming out to tempt him to stay there. But he says, as long as the Lord lives, as long as your soul lives, 
I will not leave you. Why? I have not served you 8 to 12 years for nothing. There's something that I require. There's something that I haven't caught yet. You have done 16 miracles. I need to do 32 miracles. There's a double portion that is required for me. And if there's a double portion in the Old Testament, imagine what is available in the New Testament. If the Old Testament was only a shadow of things to come, imagine what is in the New Testament. Are you guys with me? So, so with me, Bethel. So now they had a place called Bethel. The place Bethel means the house of God. But it is also a place of wrestling with God. It's a place where you will wrestle with God. But the eyes of your spirit will open. So, say with a Gilgal, it's where your flesh dies. Once your flesh dies, the eyes of your spirit opens. It's time for King Uzziah to die. Isaiah, put on for Isaiah chapter number 6 verse 1. Isaiah chapter number 6 verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died. Say with me, King Uzziah died. I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. While King Uzziah was alive, the prophet Isaiah could not see one vision. Uzziah means flesh. Unless your King Uzziah dies, the eyes of your spirits will be closed. Visions will cease. Dreams will cease. Is this a hard word or not? You look thoroughly bored. Are you okay? Yeah. Shake your head once. Okay. Because I don't, people are just looking at me here. I'm thinking, what's happening? Are you bewitched by those three little boys that came in? What's happening? Say, my King of Zion shall die this day in Jesus name my eyes will open I will see angels ascending and descending I will wrestle with God at Bethel have your seats these are tests for a mantle the third the second place was Gilgal the second place Bethel where they got to was a test. It was, it means the house of God. So the house of God. So the second test is, now actually it's the fourth test, but in, re, in relation to the places, it means you need to be planted in the house of God. No prophet, no one can receive a mantle unless they are established in the house of God. And a lot of people are looking for the perfect house. You will find no perfect house. Are you guys with me? Where there are people, there are problems. Where there are people, there are problems. Trust me. So you will find no problem. But there you find a perfect church. Jesus didn't come for that church. Okay? It is the place where Jacob wrestled with God and prevailed. It is the place where you will wrestle with God about an issue until you prevail and you win that battle. It's called Bethel. Uh, it is the place where you will wrestle with God until you possess the promises that he has promised you. I will not let you go until you bless me. I will not let you go, God, until you bless me. 
and the Bible says your name shall no longer be called Jacob but Israel because you have fought man and God and you have prevailed and his name was changed from supplanter to prince with God are you guys with me it takes one place called Bethel to wrestle with God for your identity to be changed from prince from the planter to deceiver to somebody that is a prince with God. That when his brother who was seeking to kill him, found him at that place, ran to him and hugged him and couldn't wait to see him. But his brother was supposed to kill him because his brother didn't meet Jacob. His brother met Israel, prince with God. Once you fight and with God and prevail, your enemies will turn around. Uh, they'll begin to see you as somebody different. You'll get promotion that is happening. You cannot win and wrestle with God and prevail and not be blessed. There's an importation, a special importation that comes to those who wrestle with God and prevail. Wrestle with Him. Even if it is tonight, even if it is tomorrow, don't stack, don't let it be, uh, 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 what do you call it? Don't procrastinate. Many nights I sit and I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I worship. Many nights I'll start, if now we have the prayer meetings at night, but before that, I'll start at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and I'll worship and I'll pray. And, I'll wo and it's 12 o'clock and I'll worship and I'll pray. And then warfare begins. Or then I begin to hold God to His promises. And it is like He's in the midst of my room. And I'll hold Him to promises. I'll say, you said you will do one, two, three. You said, I'm coming to you to plead my case. As in a courtroom. You said this. And then your word says, you will not leave me until you have done as you have spoken. Because you exalt your word above yourself. You are now obligated to fulfill this promise. And I will not let you go until a blessing comes upon my life. I will hold you. I will seek you. I will wrestle with you every single day if it takes until we see revival in the nation. That has been planned by the enemy to become destitute. That has been planned by the enemy to become Zimbabwe or Venezuela. Within 10 years. Have your seats. People don't understand the plans of the enemy for South Africa is for it to become like Venezuela or Zimbabwe before 2030 so that 2030 could come to pass so that it can be an one continent, an open continent. And that is not a problem for us because we are old. It's a problem for our children. That is why there must be spirit-filled churches that have schools. Are you guys with me? And when we build, we will build schools next to it. There must be schools. Because otherwise you could put your kid into some school. And they teach them LGBTQI plus T, whatever it is. <laughs> Tell them to take off their pants and do this and that. Teach them witchcraft. And they're six years old. That is what's going on in the school now. And then your kid sits and listens to somebody eight hours and they listen to you one hour a day. Who do you think they're going to listen and believe? That is why we have to build schools. It's not difficult to build a school. 
Once you have the headquarters up, it's not difficult. Trust me, it's really not difficult. Another event that took place at Bethel was that Jacob saw God face to face, but he also saw the angels ascending and descending. His spiritual senses was activated and his spiritual eyes was opened. When Gilgal has successfully been dealt with, your flesh has been dyed, your eyes open. Are you guys with me? Your eyes open. Your ears open. Bethel is a place of spiritual sensitivity. It is a place where spiritual senses are activated for one to see and to hear in the spirit. You can have the anointing, but without discernment, you will lack in the knowledge of how to use that anointing. A Bethel experience is therefore crucial for the activation of spiritual senses. This is all to get a mantle. Are you guys with me? Bethel is a portal. It is a gateway to heaven. Jacob said it is the gateway to heaven. It is a place where God in His sovereignty is set as a gateway to heaven in order that He may, that he may relate with man. It is a portal. In this church, a portal has been opened. That is why God's presence is poured out here. A portal is opened here. That is why the face of Jesus Christ appeared here. And I pray for more encounters like that. That is why we're praying 60 days, three hours every day, except for a Saturday and a Sunday. Saturday people anyway praying, so let's say except a Sunday. Sunday they're also praying, so it's almost every day. So it's, uh, uh, but 60 days we're praying, three hours every day. Why? You will only pray if you are hungry. We want to see you on Zoom. We want to see you on Facebook, on YouTube, preferably Zoom, so that we can see you eye to eye. I sit there. When I, when I pray, I sit on my, on my chair, and the TV is right here, and I can see who is on there. And then I'll tell David, move, and then I'll see who's on there. And I see all of your screens are black. It's okay. Okay. Um, uh, 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 we understand why. One person was doing something the one time that was not savory. And, um, uh, but, but put your screens on, pray with us. You see, you put a black screen on. Don't fool anyone. You put your black screen on, you're sleeping. You put your black screen on, you're watching a movie. Some of you here, you're doing it. At least, at least Leon and them can see we're there. We just put our black screen on. No, man, be accountable. Put, be there face to face. Pray with us. Don't fool. You might fool us, not me as a prophet, the others, but you won't fool God. You won't fool God. And it is prayer that brings revival. Is it okay? I'm just talking gently like this because we're going to release the mantles now. We're going to minister to people now and uh, stuff like that. Are you guys with me? So Bethel is a portal. It is a gateway. Once you pass Bethel, your eyes are open now. You wrestled with God. You got your new name, your new identity. You no longer look the same. Ah. You are a different person. When people look at you, they say, but you don't look the same anymore. Amen. One guy came to me, he said, I cannot believe I'm speaking to Leon de Priya of so many years ago. I said, I'm not the same. I've encountered God. Be somebody that said, God, I'm going to wrestle with you and hold on until 
you bless me. I don't care if it takes five hours. This is a basis of eternity. This is in relation to eternity. This is in relation to my destiny, my family, my future. I will wrestle with you, not on my base. I will scream, I will cry. Listen, how did I do it when I was younger? I went into my room and I cried aloud. I screamed until God came down. Now people are so conservative. It's not my personality. My God. I went into my room. Even today I still do it. I say, God, fill me with your fire. Baptize me with your fire. Until I am filled with your fire. Fill me with the anointing. Fill me with the glory. Fill me with power. And I scream. I say, I want to see your face. I want to see your presence. I want more of you. And I cry until something in me breaks. This isn't done by a sweet little prayer. God isn't... God isn't found by a sweet little prayer. He's found by violent prayers. And that how I prayed now, I scream louder than that. And I keep on until God comes down from the heavens. Until He cannot ignore me. I promise you now before God I do that. Until my soul, the divinity of God is in my soul. And I can feel something has shifted, something has changed. Either an angel appears right next to me. Or myriads of angels come into my room. Or God comes into my room. Or His fire fills me. But something happens after I'm done with that prayer. I'm not just sitting there, karabasha, karabara, karabasha. Please. I hear some people praying, but it sounds like the car is abundant, the car is abundant, the car. I'm thinking. <laughs> no, let groanings come out of you. Let the spirit groan out of you, come out of you. Let there be a movement in your spirits. Let God see hunger. Tongues can be religious. I said it. Tongues can be religious. Your outer man must be broken. How your outer man is broken is you cry and cry and cry unto God. Until he changes you. Hours. Hours, 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 hours. With no interruption. If there's interruption, you chase them out of your room. And you hours and hours. Then we see who's desperate to seek change. Who's desperate to seek God. Who's desperate for a mantle. As I'm standing in front of you now, I have the ability to break my outer man. These are spiritual things. I can break my outer man right now and the anointing will begin to flow. But it comes by practice. But it was God who broke my outer man. Break your alabaster box. And pour your perfume upon his feet. You'll be a changed person. He'll put his heart in your heart. All of a sudden you'll have a heart for souls. All of a sudden you'll have a heart for people. All of a sudden. You will have a heart 
for his kingdom, his church, his presence. Many times people who battle to experience that are those who battle to tithe. Because they don't understand the principle of giving. Giving, just starting with the tithe, but everything giving. God is a God who gives. The moment He sees you giving, He knows you're relating to Him. He gave His only begotten Son. Ah, Abraham. He breathes out. He never takes in. Uh, Jehovah. What is the Jehovah Nisi? Huh? Jehovah? Al Shaddai. The one who is the many breasted one. He sustains everyone, but is not needed to be sustained by anyone. That is the God we serve. His presence is going to enter this place tonight. I want you to be ready to catch mantles. But be broken before Him. God comes, the Bible says He's near the brokenhearted. You can see when a person is broken. And no vessel, no person has ever been used in the supernatural without being broken. Put on the next verse for me in Kings. Zedanum. Then Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me unto Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives, as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho came to Elisha and said to him, Do you not know that the Lord will take away your master from you today? So he answered, Yes, shut up. And at Jericho, Elisha had to overcome another battle called warfare. Prophetic discernment. He had to learn prophetic codes, language and discernment. He had to learn when to be silent. What happened to Jericho? When they were around the walls and the walls of Jericho fell, they had to learn to be silent and learn when to shout. It is a place of warfare. So you will be tested in a realm of warfare where there will be such spiritual warfare against you. And unless you survive that, you will not be able to move on to the next test. Let's go to the next one. Let's carry on reading. Hmm. I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. And 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood facing them at a distance. While the two of them stood by the Jordan. Say with me, the Jordan. Now this is the place where the mantle fell. Go one verse back. Listen to this. 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood facing them at a distance. Say with me, at a distance. While the two of them stood by the Jordan. You see, a father and a son is together. The others were at a distance. They were students, sons of other prophets. But they were at a distance and they were watching what was happening. Next verse. Now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up and struck the water, and it was divided this way and that. So the two of them crossed over on dry ground. And so it was when they crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask, what may I do for you before I am taken away from you? Elisha said, Please, let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. 
So he said, you have asked a hard thing. Say with me, a hard thing. A mantle is not an easy thing to carry. People want to kill you. People want to destroy you. People hate and curse the very footsteps and place your feet steps upon. They curse your family. They curse your children. That's why when you have a mantle, you need to make sure you have a mantle. You have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me, say with me, see me. If you have still spiritual perception that you received at Bethel, when I'm taken from you, it shall be so. But if not, it shall not be so. Meaning to receive a mantle from somebody requires spiritual perception. You need to be able to discern that this man has a mantle. There's something that is supernatural upon him. There's something that is abnormal upon him. It's not just a normal human being. There's something spiritual. There's something godly. There's something supernatural that's making him do these things. But if you do not have the spiritual perception to perceive that, it shall not be so. Next verse. Then it happened as they continued on and talked that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it and he cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and his horsemen. So he saw him no more. Say with me, hold on, hold on. Eli say with me, Elisha saw it. So his spiritual perception was still there. He saw this whole thing happening. He saw the chariots of fire. He saw the whirlwind. And he cried out. Say with me, he cried out. He didn't whisper out. When you seek God, you cry. Until there's nothing left of you. Are you guys with me? He said, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. He said, my father, my father. Did he say my prophet, my prophet? My teacher, my teacher. Uh, my master, my master. Are you guys with me? Why are you so silent? Did he say, my teacher, my teacher? He said, my father, my father. The chariot of Israel and its horsemen. So he saw him no more. The mantle fell when he understood fatherhood and sonship. Because a mantle can only be given from a father to a son. Not from an institution, not from a company, not from an organization, not from a prophet, not from an apostle, not from an evangelist, not from a teacher, from a father. Mantles are made to be given from fathers. Joseph received the mantle of dreams from his father. Are you guys with me? My father, my father. The chariot of Israel and his horsemen. So he saw him no more. And he took a hold of his own clothes. And tore them into pieces. He also took up the mantle of Elijah. That had fallen from him. And went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. So he took the mantle of Elijah. Then he took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and he struck the water and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? 
And when he also had struck the water, it was divided this way and that. Now the scholars will tell you that he first struck the water and nothing happened. That is why he asked the second time, where is the Lord God of Elijah? Because I struck this water and nothing happened. But now I'm taking this mantle again. And as I'm striking it, I'm saying, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had also had struck the water, it was divided this way and that. And Elisha crossed over. Say with me, crossing over. When the mantle comes upon you, it is your season and your time to cross over. Uh, it is your season and your time to cross over whatever situation you had, whatever problem you had, whatever season you are in, you will have a crossing over taking place. What happens at the crossing over? Listen to this. Next verse. Have your seats. Now when the sons of the prophets who were from Jericho saw him, they said, the spirit of Elijah... Now listen to this. The sons of the prophets who were all this, they were all the intelligent ones telling him what to do. When they saw him, they said, the spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. And they came to meet him and they bowed. Say with me, bowed. To the ground before him. When you have a mantle. You become a king. People will find themselves bowing down before you. Their spirit inside of them. It's not worship. There's a difference between kneeling and worshiping or bowing and worshiping. Are you guys with me? What did you do when you asked your wife to marry her? I hope you went on your knees, some of you. When you went on your knees, did you worship her? Oh, okay. So why is going on your knees now worshiping someone? People are like, I'll never go on my knees before, the, before, before a man of God or before this. No, that's a devil of pride that is actually talking in you. Because we are speaking about a gift of Christ that is in a person. God has made him a representative of Christ. I'm not saying bow before me, please. I'm giving you truth. I've never forced, never made anyone bow before me. I've had many bow before me. We'll get to hotels. I'll get to restaurants. Hotels that is literally in the middle of nowhere. Where I think I'll maybe have some peace. And I hear a knock on the door. And as I open the door, somebody's bowing in front of me with a platter of fruits and chocolates and cool drink. And say, man of God, prophet, please lay your hands on me. Lay your hands on me. I'd be like, how do you know I'm here? We get to Cape Town, we get to a restaurant, a, a well-known, very well-known restaurant. Up there, uh, Stefan and them are just introducing, we just landed, we were just going for supper. And uh, we get there, next thing, I have two staff members bowing down by me. Man of God, prophet, we watch you on YouTube, please lay your hands on me, prophesy. And just by that act, my spirit is moved. I said, you have two daughters. I said, you're worried about the ones funds for studying for university. But God says he's going to take you out of this place and put you into another place where you will have money. Now there's three waiters standing. And they're like, all want words now. There's nothing wrong with bowing. There's absolutely nothing wrong with bowing. But I've never requested anyone to do it. It is just strange that the Spirit of God moves when it happens. I'll make a devil bow. 
Because every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So when I deal with devils many times, I'll say, bow your knee before the Lord Jesus Christ. It has to be done so for Scripture to be fulfilled. Have you seen Have you seen Listen to this. The spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. They said the spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. And they came to meet and bowed to the ground before him. Next verse. Then they said to him, look here. 50 strong men with servants. Please let them go and search your master. Lest perhaps the spirit of the Lord has taken him up and cast him. Okay, I'm not going to read any further. Sit with him mantles. How do I receive a mantle? How do I receive a mantle? Zedano sitting. Zedanas. Zodonama sitting. Maudono. How do I receive a mantle? I just want to open up something here. Say with me first of all, recognizing the mantle. The first way I can receive a mantle is I need to recognize that there is a mantle on that person. Then number two, I have to receive from that mantle my spirit and my heart has to be at a place of receiving how do i not receive when i sit like this um number three i have to honor the mantle i can get into the scriptures and everything and then number four which i have put on say with me serving I have to serve that mantle. If those things are fulfilled, a mantle comes upon my life. God chooses whom a mantle comes upon. God chooses whom He places His mantles upon. But we can make ourselves available by fulfilling these tests. Seeking Him violently. Let me tell you, if you cry in your room like I did, explain to you how I did now. God cannot ignore you. You scream and cry until your spirit is broken. That is how you found or find God. I don't want to preach to a bunch of religious people. They'll just say, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but they never do it. Can I have five people that are saying that I'm going to seek God like that until I find Him? That is how He put a ministry upon my life. I sought Him. Not one day, not two days, not three days, not four days, not five days. A, in the beginning, a year. Now it has become a habit. Now I just lie on my bed and I lay, lift my hands and the glory comes in. And I begin to just cry and weep as the Spirit of God comes on me. I weep uncontrollably that it feels like my insides are turning. That my heart, my, this nowhere here, it feels like it's squashing like this. As I'm, as I'm groaning and I'm weeping uncontrollably for my sins, for souls, for more hung, for more of Him, for too much flesh that is in my life. And that is how you enter into a realm of holiness. That is what attracts the Holy Spirit towards you. Some Christians think they, they call themselves Christians. God is so far away from them. They should rather be called non-Christians. God is so far away from them. 
the arrogance and the haughtiness, the apathy and the familiarity. When lost have you cried to God like that? Like it is your lost. It is your lost time. Like you don't know if you will die. You see, too many of us think that we, own our, we have our lives in our own hands. We don't understand our life is in the hands of God. We are but a vapor. God can sneeze and we are gone. Do you think God cares so much? Yes, I understand God cares about you. Let me not change the doctrine now. But, but let me do a paradox. Do you think God cares about your life? Of course He cares. But also, He killed 180,000 people because Miriam and Aaron made a mistake. Those poor people had nothing to do with it. It is time that we understand the right perspective of God and know who we are in the sight of Him, that we are nothing, we are broken. When lost have you cried before Him? Raise your hands to the Lord where you are. Lift the piano, lift everything. Lower sounds. I mean lower key. Lift it, lift the sound. I don't hear the piano. I don't hear the piano. Change the sound or something or help me, help me, help me. Let the atmosphere, there we go. When lost, have you cried out before Him? When lost, have you become broken before Him? Come on, lift it. I want it to be you and God right now. You and the one who is holy. I want you to encounter His holiness right now. Like Isaiah said, there's nothing good in me. I come from a people of unclean lips. Let your glory begin to fall. His glory is attracted by a hunger, a hunger. Be broken before Him tonight. I want to hear the sound and the cry of a broken and a hungry people.
Lift his mic, lift his mic. So face to face. the song to be your standing on holy ground say heavenly father holy spirit i repent of a hardened heart remove this hardened heart and replace it with a heart of flesh give me your heart Give me your spirit. Give me the anointing. Break me. Mold me. Make me. I heal to you. I surrender to you. I'm tired of fighting. Forgive me for the flesh and the carnality. Receive my tears as a sign of repentance. Give me the spirit of groaning, prayer and supplication. Holy Spirit, make yourself known to me. Make his face known to me. I want to see your holiness. I want to see your beauty. I want to see your glory. 
show me heaven. Show me the throne room. Father, let your glory fill this place now. Let your presence rest on the hearts of the people. Let the weight of the kabod rest on them. Let it convict them now. Holy Spirit, let it convict them now. Bring forth every sin, every area of transgression. Let your holiness enter into this place. Remove their hardness of heart. Remove their pride. away don't try to impress by praying or anything like that focus on him yield on him father I repent of every time I have been in the flesh when you wanted me 
every time I've been in the flesh when you wanted to communicate or use me. I repent of selfishness. May your Holy Spirit never be taken from us. When your people are ready with brokenness, may mantles fall on them. When your people are ready with brokenness, may mantles fall upon them. May you fill us with fire. May you fill us with power. May you fill us with love. May you fill us with your presence. May a wave of your presence fill this place. May the wind of the Holy Ghost breathe through this place right now. May the wind of the Holy Ghost change hearts in this place right now may every devil that is limiting an encounter with God in people's lives right now by the blood of Jesus Christ I expel you and I command you to leave their lives May this atmosphere be filled with your glory, be filled with angels. tonight make a decision to say I push through the hardness of heart and I let my emotions out towards the one who is holy the one who can change my life tonight the one who can mantle me tonight of me more of you 
in the words of John the Baptist, I decrease so that you may increase. Let your new wine be poured out upon this place. but I don't hear the sounds. Say with me, say Holy Ghost. Say violently, say Holy Ghost. Fill me with your fire. Baptize me with your fire. Tonight, fill me with your love. Now, I want to hear you say it now. Say, I want your fire. I am desperate for your fire. I am desperate for your power. Fill me now. I am hungry for you. Give me your presence. Give me your presence. Say with me, say, break me, mold me, make me. In Jesus' name, break my heart for what break yours. Break my heart for what break yours. I don't hear you crying. Say, break my heart. For what break yours, fill me with fire. Say it again, not I see some of you speaking so conservatively. Say, fill me with fire. Say it again, say, fill me with fire. Now, in Jesus' name, baptize me with fire in Jesus name I repent of every form of flesh remove it out of my life in Jesus name fill me with more of you fill me with the Holy Ghost and power in Jesus name say with me aloud church say fire say it again say fire not conservatively let your emotions out say fire Mantles are going to fall on many now. But I want to see and I want to see faith. I want to see you broken because this is the moment of change. This is the moment where your Jacob turns into Israel. This is the moment where you're no longer the same. This is the moment where fire will come upon you. This fire will change you. Come on, church. I don't hear you. Don't be Afrikaans Krugersdorp now. Be unpredictable. Come on. Cry out. 
to him. Cry out to him. Cry out to him. Cry out. Let the fire of God fall. Let his fire fall. Let his fire fall. Now, there you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. Let his fire fall. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't be conservative. 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 Let the fire fall. Let it fall.
Trumpets calling your voice. 
God like Jehovah. There's no 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 God. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. Declaring the word of the Lord And these are the days of your servant Moses Righteousness being restored And all oh, these are days of great trials Of famine and darkness and sword And so we are the voice in the desert Crying, prepare the way of the Lord Let your kingdom move. 
beautiful church.
ministry upon your life and I see a mantle and the Lord said to me they try to remove your star of destiny they try to take stuff away but it shall not be so I by the word of a prophet restored it back this night in Jesus name oh, there is even the sickness in your body, sickness, sickness, sickness. I rebuke infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ, and it shall not take you. I command full healing right now in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost. 
Christian home. She's your daughter. Let me tell you what I see. Wait, do you come out of Hinduism or uh, is it okay? How long are you safe now? 22 years. Okay, have you gone through deliverance? Never. Okay. Are you in our church here or in another church in our church? I want to encourage you to go through discipleship, which we do 201, 301, 401. 201 is deliverance, but there's deliverance that is needed. I'm going to pray for you now shortly, just a short prayer that the devil knows that his time is over. You see, when, because what I'm afraid is I see a connection. That's what I saw in the spirit. I saw a connection. But do not be afraid. It will be free. It will be gone. And every spirit in the name of Jesus Christ of idolatry, every spirit of Shiva, yes, I speak to you now. Yes. I give you an expiration date. You will no longer torment her. You will no longer limit or hold her. And it will not go to any generational line or bloodline from here on further. This woman will be free, and she will be free indeed. She'll be free indeed. I pray for the blood of protection upon your life. From this moment, every devil that is hidden, that is hide for so many years. Yes, everyone that is hide for so many years. And even you, you strong man. I speak to you that her freedom is on the way and the life that you have kept from her she will live in Jesus mighty name <laughs> protect her and cover her till deliverance So we sing a new song. 
song He's doing a new thing So he's singing a new song He's doing a new thing So he's singing a new song He's not a baby in the manger anymore He's not a broken man on the cross He didn't stay in the grave He's a saying in heaven forever He's not a baby in the manger anymore He's not a broken man on the cross He didn't stay in the grave He's a saying in heaven forever tribe of Judah. I can hear the rhythm of the line. Oh, I can hear, and I can hear the rhythm of the line of the tribe of Judah. And I can hear the rhythm of the line of the tribe of Judah. And I can hear the rhythm of the line of the tribe of Judah. And I can hear the rhythm of the He's alive, oh, he's alive, he's alive, oh, he's alive, he's alive, oh, he's alive, 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 he's alive,
ascending and ascending. I see, I see the angels ascending and ascending. I see the angels ascending and ascending. Now. Oh, I see, I see, I see the angels ascending and ascending. I see the angels.
Jesus Christ I take authority over you she's gonna renounce you now every spirit of divination every spirit of abuse and you will leave a body pray this prayer
Yes, I see your glory. 
can see your glory descending. I can see your glory descending. I can see your glory fill the temple. Yes, I see your glory. Let's give Jesus a praise of Amen. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow morning for prayer.